our next and first exercise of the day, which is we're going to look at skull structure. So we're going to go a little bit deeper than just the portrait about face and all the features, and we're going to need to understand what is underneath all of that in order for me to get a clear understanding. Oop, and I'm sharpening my pencil. Make sure you always have a nice sharp uh, tip. That will keep your quality, your line quality, just like you want it. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm hoping if you have a page size like this, and right now I'm working on a 14 by 11, 11 by 14 size, eight by 10 or eight, eight and a half by 11, whatever you're working on. If you're working on a size like this, so I'm talking about 11 by 14, you would want to fit two drawings here. If you're working on a smaller format than this, so say nine by 12, you could still fit two. If it's eight and a half by 11, meaning it's kind of the size of one of these regular sketchbooks, you would want to do one per page. So you would want to do it on separate pages. And what we are going to do is we're going to apply what we just did. Um, so I'm going to give myself just a little marker, a line here, visualizing where I want to be. And I'm going to start with the image that is on our left. And I want to visualize again. Notice that it is an egg shape. I want to make it as big as possible. So I'm ghosting. I'm seeing if the size and the angles and the roundness, and maybe you can't see it yet, but it is there, very light. And that's the idea, throwing these lines where you won't need to erase later on. As I'm getting more and more confident with the actual size and shape, I'm just really just running them over and over as they get a little bit darker. So if you were to do kind of step one, step two, step three, right now, I'm, and maybe step two, step three, as I refine and confirm some of these lines as they get darker. Now you don't want to get too dark because this is not the actual contour or shape that I'm going to be dealing with in terms of the edges, but that makes me happy. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to try to def kind of identify some of the details. And maybe we've done this before, draw a skull. And if we're very familiar with the skull, that's great. Now, what I want to do is, and I want you to, even if you have to, get a ruler. If you don't have it, use your fingers. Use your pencil. What I want you to do is this, and I'm going to use my pencil. I am going to guesstimate the middle of this egg. And I'm just going to throw a little, somewhat of a very thin line. I'm hoping you guys could see that there. And you know what? I'm going to zoom in just a little more and move it here. There we go. So now you could see it. I estimated that this, and I'm actually second guessing myself. See, and that is the thing that I wanted to show everyone because I just did that. It's not a mistake, but we tend to, as humans, when we begin to deal with the face. So if I said this was just an egg, you'll be fine. Everybody's like, oh, great egg. But now that I kind of hint at, we're going to make this a face, find the halfway point. We tend to push it way up here above the middle. What I want you guys to do is really find the middle. And my tip is exaggerate to the lower. Because if I confirm, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tip of my pencil at that line, and I'm going to place my finger right at the bottom so I have a marker. And when I bring my the tip of the pencil to the top, my finger should line up right there. And guess what? It did. So this confirms to me that I am in the ballpark of this being the middle. 
And that is what you want to find. And that's it. You can draw portraits. If you can do this, you are way, way ahead of the game. Now, the other thing would be, because we have a frontal view, I'm going to go ahead and draw. Now, remember, we're still using the grip for the entire day and for the next four weeks. This grip is what you want to get used to. I'm going to find the symmetry line, which means the center on a vertical axis. And I'm going to say that's pretty good. Now, because we're dealing with the skull, it's going to be a little bit different than it would with an actual, um, with an actual skin and muscle portrait. But for the most part, we are dealing with this. And this would be the eye line. Now, what do you mean by eye line? Because right now we don't have any eyes. We're dealing with the socket. So just as we would, I'm going to find two more circles just right in the middle of it. Actually, in just a little higher than the middle. So if you notice, I'm ghosting two circles about equal size. And all of a sudden, it starts looking like Spider-Man a little. Because before we do the next thing, and again, these I want light before I commit to what comes next. Because when I look at the actual shape of these the ocular cavities where our, where our eyes belong, you want to notice that the top goes down on both sides. So there's a little bit of an angle that hints downwards. And then as we come in to the middle, it rounds, and then it sh sharpens in a downward angle as well. So there's a little bit of roundness and then a sharper downward angle. And as we go all the way around, we have the same situation here where it goes down and then upwards. And this one's the key here that begins to give you that sense of actual likeness. It begins to look like it. And we're not trying to make a perfect skull. It's just giving you a little bit of what the what the bone structure that we're going to have to be dealing with later on is doing underneath. Okay, so that that's pretty good. That's fine. That maybe they should have been a little bit bigger. I'm going to go into the nasal passage here. I'm going to find the middle where both actually meet, my center and my cross, and I'm going to mark that as the top. And this just easy. You can actually just kind of almost like a backwards egg, like as we were doing before. That takes us just a little bit above halfway between the middle. So it would be a quarter of the way down. And we're just going to go ahead and draw it in. Now, like I said, we're not trying to do a read, a perfectly defined absolute likeness in terms of skull. It's just understanding where everything lines up, as simple as this, and figuring out just a couple of things, two very important. Now, the next thing that I want to take you is to the sides. And here's why. The temporal cavity, or the side, what I want you to begin to realize is how this pushes up inside towards the forehead, and then upwards and rounds, giving us kind of a separate plane. And if you do that on both sides, you right away begin to see, oh, okay, I could tell that this is the front and this is the side of the head. And that's kind of what we want to really recognize in this structure. And then from here, I want to see how far. Usually it lines up almost at the bottom of the nose, but just a little bit above it, your cheekbone. And the cheekbone that comes in, and then upward, right about here, upward. And then from here, you could just finish up. Because the jaw, we're going to deal with it separately. This is basically the major <clears throat> fundamental structures of 
the skull that will allow us to get any type of portrait. All of the features that are coming along uh, in, in the next sessions, much, much easier. And you'll see, once we realize cheekbone, nasal cavity here, this is another one. Let me point it out. And what you see here, you don't see it so much in the frontal view, but I'm drawing it here as a, I call it a keystone, because from here you have an angle that when you look at it from the profile, you'll notice that goes in, then up, then becomes again the front. So there's something very interesting in the characteristics of a portrait that happened with this feature here. So cheekbones, lateral, making sure you get the temporals for the sides, and... Once again, you could add these features here just to kind of finish it out. And that's where the mouth would be and the lower jaw. And if you want to take it further, I would really highly recommend looking at some images, maybe even a actual photograph of a skull and drawing it, uh, sometimes from different perspectives. Let's go ahead and go to the lateral view. So here we are, and now the way I want you guys to approach this is, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you get a sense of the page, and I want to make sure it fits here. So I'm not looking at this as a circle. I want, I want you to pay attention if you, are, if you want to take a second before you do it. Uh, here's what I want to do. First, I'm going to draw an egg that is wider at the back, narrower at the front. So I'm ghosting it. And again, you want to stay loose, a little bit wider here. So there's my egg. And notice that it's just not like laying, it's kind of in an upward axis. And the axis means the angle at, at which is set, if this were the ground. So it's not standing straight up. It's not laying flat. It's kind of at this angle. If you went from the north pole of the south pole, so north and south pole of the egg here, that's what you would have. So this is the first. And then I want you to, from the top of this one, I want you to connect a second one. And I want you to visualize it. Narrower at the bottom, wider at the top. And can you begin to see it? So in this case, we put together two of them. And as you get more and more familiar, you don't have to do this step. You could just go from this half right into the second. But for today, I want you to understand that putting together these two eggs here actually makes it much much easier. Our brains can begin to guesstimate what this is going to be. Oh, that, that already looks like a head. And again, here's, here's some of the details. Finding that middle. Checking it. And I'm going to check it from here, which would be the chin to the top of the head. So I can actually draw these lines here and check from the middle to the bottom with my finger, so I place the tip of the pencil at the middle, I place my finger right at the bottom, then I lift it without moving that finger, and I bring it to the top. And I guess I'm a little bit lower, so I all I need to do is move it up just a little bit, and that would be the middle. So now that I have the middle, I know where this goes. And what I'm doing is I'm just placing giving myself a little bit of space from the actual front of this egg that we drew here, noticing that this goes down and up, but we're looking at a lateral view of it, and then this goes down and up this way. Here we have that eyebrow protuberance that we were mentioning before, but here's the key. So this keystone, finding this indentation here and how it rolls up into our forehead. That's going to be the key, especially obviously for the profile. But you'll realize that when you get this, these small variations in the features, 
and you understand how they work in the structure, it's going to make all of your portraits, including any style that you're going to want to be working in, much, much easier. Almost automatic. Here's that side temporal line that we were looking for, which is this one here on this side. Now we're going to place it here. And it runs right into the cheekbone here as it runs up and gives us the side of the head. So we want, we want to kind of recognize, and we're just circling it out. And this is one of the things that when drawing heads, we tend to make them either way narrower, much, much narrower, or much, much shorter than they actually are. And the reason is, psychologists say, because there is so much happening between the eyes and the mouth that all of, atten all of our attention is focused right here. We tend to just disregard everything else. So we, we make it smaller. We pay all of our attention here. We disregard everything else. Everything else gets shorter. These features get bigger. Therefore, it looks off. And that's what we're trying to, to figure out, correct, and, and, and make sure we, we capture. All right, so I'm going to do the cheekbone here just the way I see it. And this takes me right into the cavity, the side view, which then goes right up here. And notice how it takes me right into the jaw, lower jaw, and right up into the ear cavity. And this is it. Understanding that putting just these elements together in a very, very basic way are going to allow us in this practice to develop them even further. Perfect. Okay, we're going to move to the next exercise. And I would recommend revisiting a lot of these. The more, you, the more attention you pay to these, and of discover new ways of reading and placing the major fundamental lines where you need to have them is going to just be the best way you can um, make improvements in your drawing of portraits.